surely you have seen a rainbow. Maybe you were chasing tornadoes and happened upon one. But did you ever notice that the sky is darker above a rainbow than below? I never did until someone pointed it out. We are going to find out why this is. So with the help of diffraction of light, dispersion and the incomplete story you are usually told about why rainbows form. This story starts with refraction, the bending of light as it moves from one medium like air to another medium like water at an angle. Light actually slows down in water. Visible light would take 11 minutes instead of usual 8 to get from the sun to the earth if there were a giant ocean in between. So as light slows down when it enters water the beam is forced in turn. But unlike the constant speed of light in a vacuum, the speed of light in water depends on the color. Violet light moves slower in water than red light, so it will bend more as it enters the water. An incoming beam of white light will be spread out and separated into a spectrum of color. We call this dispersion. Now let's take this white light beam and send it through a droplet of water. Some of the light will refract into the droplet then reflect off the back and reflect back out to travel down to your eyes typically at an angle 42 degree between the incoming light and the outgoing light this can occur in a circle of droplets so if the ground were not in the way rainbows would be a full circle here's the fun fact violet light refracts more in the water droplet than red lights as we discussed so violet light should end up exciting higher in the water droplet than red. But if we look in the sky, red light is clearly higher than violet light. What's going on? Well, if you are observing from down here, this water droplet will only send red lights to your eyes and the violet light will pass above you. It's the droplet down here that sends violet light to you and the violet light will appear to be coming from lower in the sky as it does. And that's how we get out colors in the rainbow from rain and sun. But there's one part I never understood. Why should all of the lights enter the water droplet right at this point? Well, the answer is it doesn't. Some red lights enter here and there and they all exit in different directions. If we add back in the other colors, you end up with an exciting jumbled mass of colors. The mass of colors should look white, but it definitely doesn't. So what's going on? This is where it goes more complicated than you usually hear. As this red light ray enters higher from the midpoint, it exists at an increasingly large angle. But watch what happens here, eventually the ray turns around. No matter where the red light enters the droplet, it can't go past this angle. That's the maximum angle and it's 42 degree for red light. It's slightly less for orange and yellow and so on until you reach violet where the maximum angle is 40 degree. So it turns out that the maximum angle you also get a maximum brightness. So even though all the colors can reach here down violet's maximum angle because their maximum is beyond that, violet is at its maximum brightness. So it stands out against the other colors. Some goes for the max of the other colorness. Below violet no colors are at the maximum. So all the colors mix again and form white. That's why the sky appears lighter below the rainbow than above. None of the light can make it out above red. So the sky appears darker. Then how did this second rainbow sneak up there? Well you will notice that the colors are flipped in order and again. Thus the sky is lighter above. That indicates that the light had to reflect twice inside the droplet in order to get the right angle down to your eyes. It actually had to enter the droplet from below the midpoint and you get a double reflection causing a second rainbow. Now the story complete. So today if you have learned something new and different, give a like to the video and please press the red subscribe button below. And as always thanks for watching.